We'll call the Board of Public Works uh, meeting to order. Clerk, would you take the roll? Alderman Collier? Here. Alderman Zielinski? Here. Alderman Grady? Here. Alderman Benner? Here. Alderman Nichols? Here. Alderman Taylor? Here. Alderman Sevenick? Here. Alderman Kruger has been excused. I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the minutes of May 15, 2017. Uh, Alderman Zielinski? Uh, I make the motion to approve the minutes of May 15, 2017. Yeah. Motion. Uh, motion made by Alderman Zielinski, second by Alderman Collier. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item D, discussion and action items. Uh, discussion of options for the Racine Street Bridge postponed from May 15th, 2017 uh, by myself. And uh, I'm gonna open it up to the DOT, Mr. Bertrand. And uh, I apologize, I, and, and Chuck here, here uh, from the DOT. And uh, we'll open it up and we'll have them have some opening statements and give uh, some of the younger council members a little history of what happened here and back in 2015 and bring us up to date and uh, what's happening today. This, this last week I see the borings happening out there so there's some activity again. So, uh, Mr. Bertrand, and would you pull that microphone closer to you? Thank you. Thank you for uh, having us here tonight. There, a little back. <laughs> and a little farther away. Okay. Just thought it would be beneficial to give a little overview uh, before we field additional questions, but we did listen to the previous tape and also heard some of the questions so we can address some of those up front as well. Uh, the bridge was originally built in 1952. Uh, we did have a structural firm do a survey uh, looking at the bridge. Uh, they did a final report in 2012 that listed a number of deficiencies that needed to be addressed either via a rehabilitation improvement or a full replacement. Uh, we did start a study then in 2014 in the springtime. Uh, one of the first things we did was look at meeting with the local community, getting local input, uh, get a feel from the community really uh, what the community felt certainly were some limiting factors that we should be aware of uh, when we developed any alternatives and also <coughs> what are some uh, things that community felt really that the project needed to address in order to be considered an improvement uh, by the city of Menasha. Uh, so via three initial stakeholder meetings uh, and talking to the public, getting input uh, with city officials as well, uh, there were four items kind of that brought forward. Number one was the multimodal accommodations on the bridge. Uh, the existing sidewalk is six feet minimum wide uh, out uh, across the bridge. However, there were three 10 foot travel lanes so certainly the 10-foot the narrow travel lanes are not adequate accommodations for both vehicles and bikes jointly. Uh, so either the bikes need to share that with the vehicles or they need to use the sidewalk jointly with the pedestrians. A six-foot sidewalk is not adequate with jointly to accommodate both bikes and pedestrians. So one way or the other, the bikes don't have accommodations uh, safely to get across the bridge. Uh, another factor that got brought out was the navigation clearance. Right now there's six foot navigation clearance from the bottom uh, of the bascule span to the ordinary high water elevation out there. Uh, there's a large number of openings and closings of the bridge, uh, which disrupts downtown traffic certainly, but also is an issue certainly for the ongoing maintenance and operation of the bridge. The more it opens and closes, the more wear and tear on the bridge, uh, and, and certainly from a lifespan standpoint, uh, it's going to ultimately affect uh, how long the bridge and last out there. Uh, the other thing that came up certainly was the intersections on the north and south side of the bridge, on the north side at the Main Street intersection, the south side at Annup Street. Uh, operationally, uh, they don't work well to move traffic, but there are also some safety concerns that were identified. Uh, we did do a crash study from 2009 to 13. There were 29 crashes that were identified, but also in talking to the local police, uh, that I believe was 25% of the crashes in the city were deemed to be within the Racine Street corridor in close proximity 
uh, to the bridge itself. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the one thing that came up was a desire, whatever was done to minimize the bridge closer time. Uh, there's two bridges only obviously that move traffic back and forth from Doty Island, Taco and Racine. So whatever improvement was brought forward was a desire to minimize the amount of closure time associated with any of the improvements. Uh, as I mentioned, we did have three, three stakeholder meetings, two public meetings, one in October of 2014, one in June of 2015. Uh, after the, the second public meeting, we did also have a meeting here in the city council chambers with some residents of Broad Street and some state representatives to address some uh, concerns that were brought up with regards to headlight glare uh, as well as noise uh, that they had brought forward. Uh, then we met subsequently with the Benasha Board of Public Works in August of 2015 and in October of 15 to present the alternatives that were developed, answer questions uh, that they had, and ultimately the city council vote in November of 2015 was for alternative J. Uh, just briefly, there were 10 alternatives that were developed. A no-build alternative, which essentially is what we measure uh, any improvement alternative against from an impact standpoint. There was a rehabilitation alternative, uh, which would uh, extend bridge life 40 years, but do nothing geometrically. Uh, just address the structural deficiencies of the existing bridge. Replacing on existing alignment was looked at, and then there were seven various replacement alternatives on new alignment. Uh, the original October 2014 public meeting, there were seven alternatives brought to that. Uh, an eighth alternative was developed based on comment at that meeting, and then two alternatives were actually developed after the uh, June 2015 meeting. Uh, one of the alternatives was the preferred alternative J, Essentially, alternative J is alternative F, and initially was called F1. The roundabouts on either end of alternative J are at the exact same location. There was a minor change in the alignment crossing the river uh, that was due to our uh, meetings with the Broad Street residents that we mentioned after the second public meeting. Uh, we looked at uh, a slightly different skew angle across the river that addressed the concerns from the residents with respect to the headlight glare. And also we looked at a light wheat and uh, somewhat of a misnomer, but a light wheat concrete deck to address the noise concerns. And when we say lightweight, we recognize concrete isn't lightweight, uh, but relative to the alternative, which would be kind of the steel deck, uh, the, it's called a lightweight concrete deck. It's Maple Oregon Bridge in Sturgeon Bay has it. It's functioned very well, uh, addresses the noise concerns uh, that were brought up uh, by the city of Manashia residents. Uh, so with that alternative J that was brought forward, again, initially was even called alternative F1. Uh, it's looking at roundabouts at the Main Street intersection on the north side, as well as at the Annam Street intersection on the south side. Uh, there is a project website uh, for anyone that's curious and hasn't seen it. Both alternatives are shown on the website and have been on the website now for uh, over 18 months uh, to view. And you can see that the alternatives are essentially the same with a slightly different skew angle across the river. Uh, that was the reason that alternative J was not brought out to another public meeting, is that the impacts essentially are identical to alternative F. The cost is essentially identical to alternative F. Uh, in looking at it uh, on paper, uh, they are essentially the same with the minor difference in the skew angle. So when uh, the impacts and everything else are the same associated with it, uh, there was not a reason to bring it back out uh, based on the comments that we had received. Uh, any of the replacement alternatives and alternative J as well does improve the navigation clearance. We did look at a, a flanking span just adjacent to the bascule span. It will provide an improvement for navigation clearance of three feet plus or minus roughly. So there will be less openings of the, the lift bridge with alternative J. Are you saying nine feet now? Uh, it will be the existing uh, lift span has six feet. So that will stay essentially the same, but immediately to the south, there will be a flanking span that would provide an additional three feet or nine feet of clearance. Uh, total width, uh, we are looking 
uh, and the one thing the two roundabouts on either end did provide was the opportunity to provide essentially a two-lane bridge. Uh, currently, there's three 10-foot lanes. Uh, with roundabouts on both sides, the RA will accomplish traffic and accomplish U-turns and left turns without the addition of that center turn lane that currently exists. So we do provide two 11-foot travel lanes, one in each direction, five-foot bike lanes on the outside in both directions, uh, and then five-foot sidewalks uh, on the outside, or excuse me, six-foot sidewalks on the outside uh, in both directions across the bridge. Six foot is a standard width across a bridge. Generally, if, if you're not on a bridge in a downtown area, five foot is the standard typically that's recognized. But across a bridge with the constraints on that, six foot is the desirable sidewalk width across a bridge. Uh, we are looking at a two year construction period for the replacement bridge, but with the benefit of an off alignment option. The first year will only be focused on the construction of the lift span. The mechanical and electrical components take longer to construct uh, out there than the remainder of, of the, the approach spans and the, uh, the roundabouts on either end. So you won't see impact to traffic until the second year of construction. Uh, some of the, the briefly touch on the schedule and then it can directly address uh, some of the other questions that we heard from the last meeting. Uh, again, uh, design started in April of 14. We are hoping to have a draft environmental document this fall. We're currently working through some uh, historical coordination uh, with properties uh, along the corridor. Uh, once the environmental document uh, is in draft format, we would have an opportunity for a public meeting, which would be late, later this year, late fall, hoping to get an approved environmental document by around the end of 2017. Uh, look to begin real estate acquisition early in 2018. Right now, on the current schedule, the what we call our, our plans uh, specification estimate gets submitted for February of 2020 with a contract letting in the summer of 2020. Construction likely starting uh, sometime in late August, early September of 2020. New bridge schedule taking two years, so we're looking at a fall of 2022. Uh, for opening the traffic. A uh, couple of comments or questions that we heard from the last meeting. Uh, there was one on the condition of the approach decks uh, leading up to the lift span. The approach spans were redecked in 1988, so they're 29 years old. Uh, we do recognize certainly in our uh, survey has concluded that the major deficiencies in the bridge are in the lift span, the, the electrical and mechanical components of that. Uh, the approach spans are 29 years old, and again, our, the substructure, and especially our original to 1952 construction, so the entire bridge is approaching its service life. Uh, certainly, it's still safe for travel, and that was a question or concern we heard as well. It is safe for travel right now, uh, and we are currently do work, I mean, regular maintenance on it as we own it, uh, but given that the approach spans are 29 years old, they also are approaching the time within the Lake Sanford Bridge where uh, they are showing signs of wear. Uh, and certainly our construction year of 2020 uh, matches very well with the conditions and the needs of the bridge as it exists today. Uh, our region bridge maintenance staff has reviewed it recently already this year. Uh, they're coming back to me and they've got a number of photos was that we don't want to push this project back any further than it currently is uh, because it does need and especially the, the lift span does need uh, improvements that, need, uh, that are needed in the 2020 timeframe. Uh, sidewalks I touched on uh, generally are six foot wide across the bridge. The deficiency is not the width of the sidewalks, it's the narrow 10 foot travel lanes and the fact that the bikes either have to, tr to share the travel lanes with the vehicles or uh, would have to share the sidewalks with pedestrians. Uh, state statute 8410, I know there was quite a bit of confusion on bridge ownership as we go forward with uh, the replacement alternative. Uh, and we did talk with the previous council on this at length. Uh, state statute 8410 dictates that the bridge ownership on a connecting highway or local street transfers to the municipality, the city in this case, after it would be replaced. So under a rehabilitation alternative, the DOT would maintain ownership. Under a replacement alternative, the city assumes the ownership after the construction is complete. Uh, we did quite a bit of looking at what the uh, historical maintenance annual costs were 
I, we did provide that to the city officials, and I believe that for Racine, they were in the $75,000, $80,000 range annually. Uh, and again, it's difficult to project forward what those are. Uh, those costs are based on the most recent cost at the time, which is the bridge that's approaching a service life. Certainly, uh, there is potential that those could be less for a new bridge, but some of the bridge tender costs and other things that go associated with that are fixed costs uh, that are annual costs to deal with. What, uh, what Quick question right here at this point. Yep. Uh, would we assume the bridge tenders wages and benefits? The yeah, as, as owners transferred. and maintenance of the bridge, correct. If it would be a replacement option in a new bridge, then the city of Menasha would assume the operation of the bridge. So that would include bridge tender costs. Correct? Okay, and those are in this eighty thousand? Yep. Yes. 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 Thank you. Uh, and we did have a lot of discussion on this before. I mean, DOT did not create the statute. We are enforcing the statute as it exists. Uh, certainly there's the opportunity for the city of Menashe, and there was a lot of talk uh, prior to the council voting in 2015 uh, that they didn't like the statute, wanted to pursue talking to their legislatures about the potential to change that. And we recognized and said that, that certainly the city of Menashe was right to do that. Uh, but until there is a change in state statute, we will continue to enforce the statute as it exists. And that's 8410? 8410. Thank you. It is a statute that has been applied in other communities. Uh, Sheboygan, Manitowoc, Two Rivers uh, have had ownership of bridges transferred to them, so this is not <coughs> unique to Menasha. We're currently going through a, a study uh, on Oregon Jackson in the city of Oshkosh, a little bit behind the Racine Street Bridge. Uh, but again, similar study going through, so the city of Oshkosh is dealing with the same issue potentially on that project, depending on what alternative for Oregon Jackson gets selected uh, down there. Uh, project is currently, I mentioned, uh, it's in fit what we call fiscal 21 of our high cost bridge program. That program is specifically for high cost bridges. Uh, if a rehab would be selected, uh, at such point as a replacement would occur. The DOT would currently pay for that in the high cost bridge program. Uh, there was some confusion, I think, if a rehab was done uh, that the DOT wouldn't pay for a replacement in the future. We would pay for uh, the rehab and then if a replacement is in the future up until such point as the ownership would transfer with the ultimate replacement. The one comment we did make, uh, which was clear at the time, was that if something would happen with our design schedule such that we couldn't deliver the project in 2021, whether it be because of a delay in city preference or a delay somewhere along the line. The high cost bridge program is somewhat unique in that many years it's one bridge that comprises the program. So if it would be delayed from fiscal 21 into the next fiscal year, there's no guarantee that there would be room within that program in fiscal 22 in order for an improvement to be built. So it would have to go into the next open year of that program, whatever that would may be, uh, would not necessarily be the next uh, fiscal year succeeding. And certainly if the condition of the bridge continues to deteriorate uh, and 2020, July of 20 or fiscal 21, uh, if 22 is booked and we'd have to go to either 23 or 24 or whatever year it may be, as the bridge deteriorates, uh, it, it may be such a condition that it can't continue to operate. And that certainly, we, it's tough to make that comment tonight because we're three or four years away from the construction date. And certainly we'll do the best we can to maintain it through that. But upon the most recent survey, again, our, our bridge unit is saying that uh, we really don't want to delay it in the schedule any further back from where it currently stands. Uh, so, and certainly we're in a situation uh, in the village of Winnie County with the bridge there, again, which is approaching its useful life uh, our bridge uh, section is very good at what they do, uh, but with these original bridges, they, they date back close to 75 years, and original parts are difficult to come by. A lot of these parts may take six months or more in order to get, uh, in order to be able to replace, depending on how major of a failure there may be. So there is a jeopardy as you get close to that end point of it, uh, with the actual repairs being more of a, a long-term window uh, in order to continue uh, to operate as that. So. Uh, I think that was uh, what we had as far as the questions. The other thing just to touch on, uh, and I know there was some
discussion as far as the city council changing their opinion uh, what would the DOT do uh, right now what we said if the council changes whatever change their mind going forward uh, the DOT would meet to evaluate what ever new opinion or new directive was given by the city there's no guarantee that we would change the preferred alternative uh, we made the original decision based on the city preference uh, at the time uh, we did say uh, that the environmental other constraints may eliminate some alternatives but certainly if the multiple alternatives are feasible and have similar overall impacts we do get strong weight to what the city preference is uh, we got the city vote back in November of 2015 and roughly a month later we met uh, and did concur with the city uh, preference at the time and move forward with alternative J uh, we've done quite a bit of design and work over the last 18 months uh, towards making alternative J a reality uh, if the alternative would change uh, I did make the comment to the mayor in a conversation that the city may uh, be on or we may look to uh, recover additional design costs from the city uh, again we would have to evaluate uh, from a DOT standpoint uh, any new directive or new direction from the city uh, we're not going to make a definite commitment tonight but it's something that we would have to weigh uh, at the regional level and at the state level uh, as far as any change in direction of what that would have for impact uh, on the project you say may may get charged for those design costs at what level at the DOT would they say we're going to get stuck with those costs if we change this who would make that call or is it the state legislature uh, right now I couldn't tell you what level it would be at the DOT I can tell you it certainly would likely be above uh, Chuck and myself's level we would be involved in that discussion certainly but the ultimate decision would certainly be above our level but that, uh, on that, that so that question could go to the director of the DOT correct it would go to the top of the region level potentially it could go down to Madison as well okay. and the top Madison person is it would be the secretary of the, of the transportation secretary Uh, anything else that'd be all just from an overview I figured that would at, at least from what we saw from questions that were asked at the previous Board of Public Works meeting tried to address those if there are additional questions certainly okay. we can entertain them I just had a few questions here and then I'll open it up to our council members uh, why not a single span you know double span is twice the cost twice the gears twice the opening the motors everything's twice in, in actuality it, it may seem that way but it's not from a counterweight standpoint with a single span and the length of the uh, the bascule span you need a counterweight that would be much deeper in in subsurface bedrock is very shallow uh, and in this case the more bedrock that you need to blast and get out there the cost would drive up so a, a single lift would actually be more expensive initially plus from a maintenance standpoint we've had good success with the double rolling leaf bascule spans even though it's lighter weight concrete just mm -hmm. kidding uh, I like that term lightweight concrete <laughs> I don't know that that shouldn't even be associated with concrete <laughs> uh, there's a 40-year life uh, on the bridge yet uh, according to this one document or 37 years out there it was a uh, uh, projected for the next 40 years uh, that the bridge could be operating the f the f with a rehab 40 w with the rehab yeah with a rehab. A, a rehab and that's again plus or minus but uh, we'd look roughly 40 years and again I mean when you're looking at that it's tough to, to be exact but that was the, the life anticipated life of a rehab was 40 years and uh, with that rehab the city would not have to take ownership correct correct and let's see at eighty thousand dollars a year uh, that comes out to 3.5 million or whatever that the city would be uh, paying in operational costs um, if we had a new bridge put in so by just having you guys rehab it keep the bridge it probably save this community over three million dollars in operational costs from owning a bridge um, I'm a little concerned about 
owning bridges, I looked, uh, I looked at Green Bay. Uh, you look at a fixed span, the Leo Frigo Bridge, and how, fa how far that sunk down. And uh, then I look at the Ray Nitschke Bridge, which is a bridge that opens and closes, and it seems like that bridge has been in trouble since, the, since when it was built. I mean, on the news reports that I see on TV, it's always closed. It seems like they have problems. So I'm a little concerned about, you know, new bridges. I am uh, just finished a 40-year career, and I've looked at um, items that were built uh, much 30 years ago, probably like this bridge. It's all rivets, and I'm sure it's almost built to railroad standards. And uh, uh, it was 1988, you said it was redecked. Uh, that deck right now, you know, it, great job. It doesn't even show any cracks, you know. I walked it the other day, there's, there's no cracks on it. And, uh, you know, so somebody did a great job back then. It seems like in the last 10 years or 15 years that concrete doesn't hold up as good as it used to. Right. So um, I have a, a little issue with cities own bridges and I don't think communities especially of 17,000 people we don't have the big enough shoulders uh, we don't have the engineering staff we don't have the dollars to to own a bridge and uh, I know that's not on your watch it's on the state legislature and uh, uh, the state senate and uh, but uh, and I understand what they're trying to do they're just trying to to kick the can down the road, which they always do. It all comes from the state down to the cities, and then we have to pick it up. And uh, that's no disrespect to you or your department whatsoever, but that's the way the state uh, operates, political end of it. And some years back, we were given the opportunity to own the Fox Locks here in Menasha, and uh, we chose not to. Hmm. And the last four years, the locks have had tremendous repairs on them, and then finally the closure because of the invasive species. But we wouldn't have been able to afford all those uh, 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 months of work on that structure and, and to pay for that at city level. And um, I'm sure any time you, you get somebody to come out, it's a $5,000 bill or a $10,000 bill, just uh, kind of figure out what's going on with it. Um, so the Solderman has no interest in owning a bridge for the, for the people I represent or for the community. And I've heard a lot of that this, this past, is it 16, 18 months since uh, 2015, October 2015. Um, Could we, because of the locks closed during this construction, can we mandate that the Taco Street Bridge is not open uh, since we don't want to get into a situation where that bridge has maintenance problems and or uh, uh, yeah, maintenance issues where it would also stay up in the air, which happens at times to us. Uh, so with that, just that short canal that extra a couple hundred yards from the Taco Street Bridge to the Menasha Lock, uh, could that be, during the construction time, see that Taco would not be open at all, so we don't have that risk with our emergency vehicles, our hospital on the other side. We'd have to go around 441, come down 41. Yeah. Taco would, would need to continue to operate for navigation purposes, so it would need to continue to, to raise and open, certainly uh, in recognizing that the improvement project would be ongoing with her screen. We would make sure that uh, any necessary maintenance was done to take on advance of that construction period to minimize uh, the potential okay. uh, for any risk. Uh, but it would need to continue to operate for navigation purposes. Okay. Uh, and where would we have to go to prevent that Taco Street? What navigation authority would we have to look at? Because again, with the lo if the locks were open, I, I wouldn't be saying this, but the locks are closed. And it's only a short span of the river from Taco to the locks, which really doesn't need much, there's not much traffic there at all. So uh, who, who would we have to talk to about that? 
I believe the regulatory agency would be the U.S. Coast Guard, I mean, that operates. Well, they've been out of here since uh, the Reagan years in 1982, mm -hmm. I think they've been out of here. The Coast Guard has. Okay. I think it's Detroit myself. Okay. Corps of Engineers. Corps of Engineers is... Out of Detroit, I'm the Coast Guard to be a. That's who runs okay. That's I know it was turned over to the, uh, the 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 River Authority through the state of Wisconsin. The locks were, I don't know about the river, and um, so we'd have to look into something like that. Certainly, we want want our emergency vehicles held up uh, uh, for that purpose of uh, just that small portion of the river. Uh, have you guys? decided on, uh, you had said to the council back then that items A through J and then F, uh, you were going to have the final say on that, and mm -hmm. what did you guys pick? Yeah, right. we picked J. You picked J. The, con the council preference was given to us in November, and roughly a month later we met and moved forward with alternative J. And then where does that F fall in here? F is still shown as an alternative that will be evaluated in the environmental document. Again, F and J are very similar, okay. almost identical to each other. The difference is a skew angle of the alignment right. across the river. But there wasn't a public hearing on that, though. Correct. Right. The F was presented uh, at the second public meeting. Okay. And again, J is so similar to F. And as I mentioned originally, it was actually called alternative F1 because it was so similar. Okay. Uh, and that alternative was developed due to our ongoing coordination and public involvement with the Broad Street residents. Basically, uh, um, yes. Alternative J took the curve out of the bridge and made it straight to get rid of the headlights into the condos on the north side. Okay. That's the only difference is there's no curve in the bridge. Okay. Between and I know and there were some private meetings with the condo and we don't go into all those details, but there were things, some things at that point that uh, the whole public they know about and the public should know about. And it wasn't on your end. Uh, when I left home tonight, uh, they were talking about the Department of Transportation uh, running out of money. They don't have the money. I know they're going to get 441 done for us out here, but uh, so this uh, this bridge could get kicked back to 2,000 whatever, right? As far as the dollars. Right now, it's approved in the high cost bridge program for fiscal 21. Okay. Uh, beyond those, that, I mean, we can't, every two years, uh, yeah. the state budget goes through an approval process. Okay. We don't comment, I mean, on that from an engineering standpoint. Okay. And it's just like here since 2015, our staff has changed. Our, uh, we've been without an engineer for 11 months, and uh, our engineer had recommended Jay at the time, and our community development director recommended Jay at that time. And both of them aren't here, and mm -hmm. maybe there's uh, a place where we reconsider this or look at it differently. Uh, I certainly like that the city of Menasha doesn't take any ownership of the bridge. That that that's something I've heard from the public a lot this last year and a half or so. So, uh, seeing that, I'll open questions to the uh, aldermen here and uh, uh, aldermen. Collier. Um, the only questions I have, if a new bridge comes in and the roundabouts are on each end, how are those, if you're going to build the bridge and then hook up the roundabout to the bridge later, because you're going to use the same bridge for a while in the street, correct? The, 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 you're, gonna, you're not going to tear down the bridge and then build it. You can build another bridge next to it, kind of. Correct. The, the new bridge would be slightly to the east of the existing bridge. And so all the time you're doing that, that, that corner of Main Street will be able to be used and everything else? We'll have to work out certainly a, a staging plan from a construction standpoint. Uh, at this point, we're very early in the design, so the exact details of construction staging haven't been developed. Uh, we get the project approved environmentally uh, and then work through a lot of the final staging and how we maintain traffic. Uh, certainly in the final stages or final design. I know the bridge is very important to some people and some people they're worried about what would happen to downtown if you shut down the access off of uh, Racine 
and you can't get downtown and some businesses might go under or you might have uh, no, nobody coming that way because it's an inconvenience. So you've looked at that. And then the other question, if you put a roundabout in, it, is it, am I correct that you cannot have any parking within 40 feet of that roundabout? Street parking? Uh, we would certainly look at it. Mean, parking would be discouraged, certainly, in close distance to the roundabout. Uh, we have looked at uh, the roundabout on both sides, at, at the Main Street especially. The roundabout, quite honestly, operates quite a bit better uh, than the, the traffic signal alternative at that location. Uh, and again, from a downtown standpoint, the roundabout provides an, a number of benefits, certainly from a traffic calming standpoint, uh, slowing speeds down, uh, from a safety standpoint, certainly vehicle safety, uh, it eliminates the, the more severe uh, accidents that would occur at intersections. Uh, from a pedestrian safety standpoint, uh, again, pedestrian crossings, in general, you're only looking at one direction of traffic when you cross uh, at a roundabout. Uh, so they do perform very well. Uh, and again, the one benefit of a roundabout on both sides of the bridge is that we really eliminate that center turn lane. Uh, so from a cost standpoint, Alternative J really is, is very competitive uh, in, in that we have a, a less width on the overall bridge. And then when you said accidents, are you talking the Racine quarter? Is that a quarter mile up to the next stop and go lights? Or is it within 100 feet of the bridge? Or what, what was that? The 29 accidents was within the limits of our project. So essentially, yeah. yeah. A couple hundred yards, both ends of the bridge. Yeah. OK, thank you. Right, actually, I seen those stats. and. I believe I'll have it, it seven. Oh, uh, sorry. Go ahead. You got the floor. <laughs> uh, I've seen those stats and very, there was maybe one or two incidents on the, on the bridge. bridge itself. The rest were uh, way off on the other ends of the bridge. But anyways, I am not in favor of bridge reconstruction. I attended your public hearing meetings. So have others that have talked to me. I believe that the best route is the rehabilitation and for the city itself. I see a reconstruction as a, a project that is out of scale for the area. It seems like it's accommodating one purpose and that is to provide a bike lane. I have no a very few, if any, incidents where bikes and the public were harmed um, on that bridge. For the city of Menasha to take over the um, the funding for the the bridge in the future. I, I could just see state officials high-fiving themselves and being happy they got another one. I think it's inappropriate that a past council thought that maybe they could change that. That's a big maybe, and um, I'm not too pleased about that. And when I talk about this being a bigger project than it needs to be, we're talking about taking major buildings down on each end. That's a big expense, not just for the city, but it, when it comes to losing tax base, but that's a big expense for the state of Wisconsin. And I'm not happy about that. I've told this council before, I love roundabouts. But in this situation, especially being so close to Broad Street, being less than maybe uh, 30, 40 feet, all of a sudden you have another intersection there. And I find that to be very um, concerning a, a huge safety issue, if anything. I think now you're creating a, a dangerous situation in that area. We'd almost have to close off both ends of Broad Street, I would think, in order f to allow for the roundabout situation to um, function in that area. It, I think Alderman Taylor kind of touched on this too. You know, you, you read in the papers, you watch the news about um, funding. I, I'm concerned about even this even being funded in 2021. And 
I'm not happy with that past council's decision. I think that that was a mistake. And um, the rehabilitation of that bridge is probably the best route to go. I don't, I'm know. not sure if there's anything from my standpoint to respond. I mean, to that, that was more of a comment than I a mean, question. I mean, everybody wants, wants a newer bridge, a nicer bridge, a safer bridge. That's, but the past council decided to go a route that makes us own a bridge in the future. We've never owned a huge bridge before. And then to take on the maintenance of that bridge of somewhere 80,000 or more dollars, and now we're adding employees and you know we might have to be changing the the benefits for those individuals and i just i can't understand the, the thinking on that again there was extensive public involvement coordination i think people, uh, what the public wanted was a nice new bridge with but the I don't public think they understood the details of the fact that we would in the future be picking up tens of thousands of dollars of maintenance costs and ownership of a bridge that if something happened, and it has, it happened here in Menasha, the bridge collapsed and a new one had to be built. Menasha would not have been able to afford the replacement of that bridge. Thank goodness it was the state. Now the state built this bridge. To me, it's their bridge and they should take care of it. And if they feel that there are flaws in that bridge, then it's their responsibility to do the rehabilitation. Uh, and again, statute 8410 is an existing statute and we were very clear up front in talking to city officials and at both public meetings about that. Uh, the city council made the previous decision full knowledge of what 8410 entailed at the time. So it was nothing that we were at all misleading about. We were very I upfront. That. In fact, your group does a great job, um, especially when it comes to informing the public. And I've, I've taken that position before up here with uh, uh, areas in my neighborhood with the 441 project. I mean, there have been, you know, half a dozen or more meetings on that that Alderman Taylor and I attended. And uh, we, we made some changes ourselves. We made recommendations, and DOT looked at that and said, yeah, that, you know, that's a good point. And they went along with that, and we appreciate that. Um, but, you know, what what does this council do i know there are members here that are like hey we made that decision already we're going to go with this i know that the mayor has a strong position because he f he wants this alternative j i disagree we can we can disagree but to me that's a big expense for adding a bike lane and that's what i see <coughs> i'm going to make a comment here uh been on the council up here for almost well since the early 90s on and off and um, I've never had one complaint on the Racine Street Bridge except that it opens too often for boats and I think on the weekend it's true and uh, um, there's some ways to work around that somewhat but uh, not for the public comment here and uh, I wrote an ordinance that stopped both bridges from being open because of emergency vehicles I didn't you could have had a power outage or some sort of a failure that uh, our hospitals on the other side of the bridge here we have one to fire department with both communities and uh, <coughs> I didn't like seeing both bridges up at one, at once. But now that's changed that the bridge tender can only open one bridge at a time uh, through technology we've got there. But before that, I had a real concern. I used to see ambulances sitting on top of that bridge. And uh, my family owned property on the river my whole life. And to see an ambulance up there, uh, that wasn't a good situation. So uh, I certainly appreciate you guys work so hard with all the input and uh, all the people that attended all those meetings and at Pewtimore uh, School and uh, the the graphics you guys made and the amount of people you had there. It was it was uh, really a great job by you guys. Um, Appreciate it. 
council councils change, state legislatures change, state senators change, governors change, and same thing up here. Things change, and what somebody might have thought five years ago or two years ago, and who knows what to come with. Uh, it looks like a serious problem at the state with transportation dollars. I mean, it's on our news all the time. The governor was just here last week and had a big sign that said 441, get her done, you know. And uh, and he's accelerating that project and, and getting that done. And uh, they're certainly doing a great job on that project. And um, and had, had, had listened to uh, the neighbors that were going to be affected by it and Alderman Sevedek and myself championed that cause and uh, we got things changed. So uh, appreciate the state listening to the, those. And uh, I think when you look at the weight of this project on the community with the property loss and the dollar amount per year for maintenance on these bridge, uh, we don't need to own this and we shouldn't own it. And another very sensitive situation we have in our community right now is that since the 1970s, we have a downtown that is functioning and people are coming down here. The head of the Chamber of Commerce told me two weeks ago uh, just how unique this downtown is. We had people that run different organizations in abutting communities that have told us how great our downtown looks and uh, there's aldermen up here like Sevenick and Benner and uh, that have been here for a long time that have since the since 1985 when we put the marina in all these years it took to get to this point here and there's some really concern that if we close the bridge and detour people away from our downtown that we might lose this momentum. And these businesses are just getting established and uh, I don't want to see our downtown fail. We're, we're, it's only getting better. And hopefully by 2021, hopefully by 2021, we're, we're stronger than we are today and that, that momentum continues. But at no time would I want to see anything that would hurt our downtown businesses because of the and in, in relative to the impact of the businesses mentioned that the closure time would be the same for rehab as it would be for alternative J. I mean, alternative J with the two roundabouts, with the improved bridge coming across, certainly has potential to be a major bonus for the downtown area uh, as well. So, I mean, construction, whether it's a rehab or a replacement, is going to impact traffic for one calendar year, essentially, okay. out there. So. Okay. Uh, I know all of them seven like myself we're not in favor of these roundabouts whatsoever I think it's gonna hurt our downtown uh, we're gonna lose property we're gonna lose a lot of character at the north end of the Racine Street Bridge we have a, a nice uh, grove of trees there we have a beautiful looking business on the waterfront and that's fourteen thousand dollars a year in taxes that are going to be taken off for that building and then we're just going to clear cut that whole area there so it's going to be a sea of concrete and it's it's not going to be very appealing for for that area in our downtown I think we have a very unique area here and I don't see any reason to to clear cut and pave over everything it's just my opinion, but uh, I've heard this from many, many people in the last year and a half. So since that meeting in October 15, there's been a lot of input from the public that see this. You know, I was at the coffee shop the other day, some guy and his wife, I never knew, they walked by and they said, we don't want a new bridge. You know, so you get comments like that out there in the public. Any other aldermen? Alderman Zelensky. This is a rough subject, as I think we all know, but when I ever make a decision up here, at first is safety, and then next is how much is it gonna cost the taxpayers and how is it gonna affect them. I think there's too many more negative aspects to owning this bridge and reconstructing it than maintain, having the state do the rehabilitation and having them own it. 
for that reason, I, can I make a motion to change to have this this council decide right now to have us change from alternate J to alternate B? I I would entertain that motion, and then it would have to go to the council at the yep, next meeting to, to move to council. Yes, so that's my motion from alternate J to alternate B. Is there a motion made for alternate B, and is there a second? I'll second that. Uh, state your point of order. Thank you. As I recall from the last meeting, there was a motion on the table that was uh, postponed till this evening. I don't recall what that motion was. If it is the same or different from the one that was just announced. I'll hear from the city clerk. I know it was, uh, I believe, item J. Uh, the, the motion that was originally made was by Alderman Taylor, second by Alderman Zielinski, to remove alternate J as the preferred option for the Racine Street Bridge replacement, and the city of Menasha has no interest in ownership of the Racine Street Bridge. Um, and there was no action at that time because then there was also the motion to postpone to the next meeting. So. That is correct. The motion is still on the floor. Okay, and uh, we can take care of that motion. That if we want to carry that over from the last meeting, and uh, you can. I just uh, yeah, I'm gonna can alter. I yeah, yeah. Alderman yeah. Seven. Okay, that motion's on the floor. If you want to add an amendment to that motion, there you go. Alderman Solinsky. I'd like to amend the motion created last meeting to remove alternate J and not have ownership and make it so that we have alternate B. Okay. Uh, any comments? Alderman Collier. I don't know if we're... I need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. On the amendment, uh, is there a second? I'll second that. Alderman Collier, discussion. I don't know if we're getting real close to voting on this, but I myself would think that uh, we should have the full council involved and have an eight-man, uh, eight-person decision. I do not know how Steve <coughs> would vote. I have not ever talked to him about the bridge. Right. And so, this is in committee, and it's got to go to the council, Alderman Collier. Okay, thank you. For at the next meeting, it'll go to the council. This is just a committee recommendation up. Uh, any discussion on the okay. amendment? Alderman Sefnick. I'm sorry, um, Alderman Taylor, Alderman Zelensky, but um, the information that was provided to me was way too small. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. And I am not. That's why I brought this. <laughs> I'm not familiar with this. Thank See? you. <laughs> Boy, look at all these guys got these <laughs> things. I, first time I ever brought one. You got to get bifocals. Are you, you're familiar, obviously, with mm -hmm. Alternative B. Alternative B is a rehabilitation? Correct. And uh, I saw something about um, environmental or something in that. Oh, Assessment that? due to minimal environmental, real estate, and property impacts. Okay. Um, this is a recommendation just to the Common Council? Yes. But we first we got to get rid of business from our last meeting with uh, the amendment. Okay, so we're voting on the we're amendment. We're voting on first. the amendment. Um, and the clerk can reread that again. Moved by Alderman Zielinski, seconded by Alderman Taylor to amend the motion to remove alternate J, replace with alternate, alternate B and that the city does not retain ownership of the bridge. Correct? So voting no on this, uh, we get rid of this motion from the last meeting. Correct? No, this no. is an amendment. We vote on the amendment up or down, which would be whatever you feel. If you want alternative 
B, you'd vote I. If you don't want alternative B, you'd vote nay. But it's it's on the amendment though. This is all we're voting on right now is an amendment to the from the motion last. that was made from last time. Yes. And uh, correct. Correct. Yes. Or the attorney. <coughs> Is everybody clear on that? No. Uh, attorney, uh, uh, Captain, would you uh, help us on this amendment? If you're voting yes or no, what is that? Uh, what are we voting on as far as uh, the amendment? What's added to the last motion at the last meeting is to substitute alternative B. Okay, so if we want to get rid of the last meeting, the A, the <coughs> item J. No, we're just voting on the amendment right now, Mr. Oh. Chairman. No, I have that confused. Um, then, I thought. Then the motion becomes amended if it gets passed or not. Okay, I thought we were voting down item J from last time. Okay. I'm, I stand corrected. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Uh, Alderman uh, Nichols. Thank you. Thank you for being here this evening. Could we back up and talk about some dollars for a second? Um, I have a motion on the floor, and I'd really not like the question to go back out to, to stay within the council here on the amendment. If it's about the amendment, then we right. amendment. It's about the amendment. So I'll call a vote. Uh, or, see if any other or if there's any other discussion you want to well, rephrase the, that. Well, the amendment has to do with alternative B. As Mr. Bertrand stated, the bridge uh, was built in 1952. That means the bridge turns 65 this year, 65 years old. If the bridge were to be only rehabilitated, what is the expected lifespan after, an, after a rehabilitation? The best estimation from the structural designer is 40 years. And that was in our documents here, too. Thank you for that. Another 40 years, which would get us to um, a 100-year-old bridge. Point being, I don't know how many people would like to drive over a 100-year-old bridge or walk over it or bike over it. What would the cost of, um, well, let me back up a second. Would the cost of a rehabilitation be covered under the um, bridge program that you mentioned? Yes, it would. Okay. Would that be done uh, in, I'm speaking off the cuff right now because I had to re- uh, think about my questions here. Would that be done on the current schedule? Uh, quite honestly, if we would change the design at this point, we would need to evaluate everything within the schedule to see if we could, what date that we could still meet. I wouldn't be able to commit tonight uh, whether we wouldn't be able to or not. Essentially, though, you'd need to start over with an environmental assessment of the situation, and we would we could risk losing even a rehabilitation in the in these next few years potentially that's possible yes that's a big roll of the dice for our community um, and could you um, review for us again which safety um, obstacles 
would remain with a, with a rehabilitation. In the beginning of your presentation, you outlined a few, um, like pedestrian as access, navigational clearance, driving lanes, all that stuff. You know, not to reiterate here, to, to just go on and on, we've already had this discussion. Those facts were presented to us already, and for the, we have a closed session tonight. It's 9 o'clock, and I'd like to move forward on this instead of covering ground we already have. Alderman Taylor, the res I respect what you're saying. It's been a long meeting. I would just like everyone to be pre to be refreshed. We've of already those had facts. that information. And as this project was already voted on once, we voted on it two years ago. We had the same information. We're re we're reexamining it tonight. I think at tonight. this time it's out of order. And the residents of my district are highly impacted by this project. Mm -hmm. I think it's an appropriate line of questioning. Yeah, we've already did, we've already gone through that, and there's no sense to go over it. If somebody wants to look at the video, fine. They're going to watch it at home. They're going to hear it. No need to just keep rehashing this whole situation. We've had the facts, and I let the state mm -hmm. present their facts, and we've already had them. So then the I'll yes. I have a point of order. State um, your point of order, all of it seven up. Right now we are only taking discussion on the amendment. I would, um, I don't have any problems with Alderman Nichols' comments, on, but we should actually only discuss the amendment at this point, and then if it passes or fails, then her conversation would be in order. Well, I disagree, but uh, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, we should stay on the amendment here, and uh, you want to curtail your questions to the amendment? I move uh, that can is this an appropriate time no, to make the motion, motion, no, the motion on the floor that we discussed in no, the chairman won't our, allow that is a motion on the floor then I'll make a motion for the board to overrule the chairman at this point that, on what on right now, um, what we have is an amendment before us we have an amendment on the floor Motion would be in order at this point. No, it's not in order as I stated. I'll ask the chairman to conduct his meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I stated. It's not appropriate at this time. Well, it's interesting that the board would choose to silence the representative from a district that represents, that uh, has a high stake in and, this discussion. And mine too. Yes, we both uh, <laughs> meet in the middle on middle of the river on this one and we're talking on the amendment so any further to alderman collier we're going to be voting on the amendment right. it's going to we're going to you know try to go forward and you got to vote on what's best for the city long term <laughs> and that's all i have to say thank you alderman collier uh, would the clerk read the amendment or alderman seven well, i just wanted to say that um i don't disagree with alderman nichols i just i think her comments should be made after the amendment i think she, right now what we have before us is an amendment so you need to only address that narrow line of the amended the amendment and then once we get past that then everything you want to say should be spoke on and no one wants to stymie what you want to say oh certainly we've already had that and i'm not going to stall this meeting i want to keep this moving at this late hour and uh this has already been discussed now the clerk read the amendment moved by alderman Zelinsky, seconded by alderman taylor to substitute alternate j with alternate b and that the city does not retain ownership any correct? further discussion? Uh, Alderman Zelensky, turn your mic on. I, with with that, it's it's been said a different time now. Um, with that, I am not changing the actual motion to get rid of 
option B, it's changing it with option B. Yes. It's not getting rid of J from that motion, it's adding on that we're gonna put, we're gonna implement option B instead of J. Yes. I'm implementing option B instead of having option J. Yes. But not yes. as it is. Yes, that's what the amendment yes. is. Just to make, make it clear, I'm not. Okay. No further discussion. We'll take I a roll do. call. I do, I do. Oh, uh, so, sorry, I'll admit Benner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've been kind of reflecting on what all of the path that Alderman Nichols was going on, and I'm a little confused about the mindset that the financial impact of removing alternate J, understanding the financial impact of it, does not have anything to do with the amendment because she's trying to find out the financial impact of removing alternate J and then implementing alternate B. And I, it seems to me that the financial impact of removing alternate J and comparable to alternate B is germane to the discussion of removing it. So I'm curious what the mindset is of how her dialogue has nothing to do with the amendment. If you could explain that to me, please. I feel what, what she was asking was um, the safe, she was talking about the safety aspects of the bridge and she wanted the state to reissue, just drawing this out about the safety aspects. We've already covered that. We've already covered the sidewalks, the bike lanes, and that's what uh, I had questioned her on, that we've already been through that. Mm, I just kind of felt like the path that she that's, was going that's down what the had question, to do with That's that. what the question was, and that's when I interrupted her. It was on the safety aspects of the bridge, which okay. has already been covered. Uh, she uh, left now. I wish I could. I, I don't disagree with you. I think she, she, she wavered back and forth on the amendment. Yes. The amendment. But that's up to the... And we're here, we're here to, move, to move forward with it. That was already covered. Well, if... And maybe I'll leave this, out if you could give her a mic one more time, because I, did you hear what I was saying, Alderman Nichols? Because when you're gone, I thought that you were kind of heading down a path of the financial impact of removing J and leaving us only with alternate B. And I thought that the, the path that you're going on was germane to the amendment, as long as it ultimately had to do with the impact of removing J, which safety could be part of that impact, but also the financial impact. She specifically and asked about the bicycles and the walkways and the sidewalks, and that was already covered. That's what I rule on, that again, portion of it. But again, if we remove J altogether, then we don't have any dialogue left to talk about it. The only dialogue we have yes. left is, is B. Yes, yes we will. At, at, we, at, uh, at well, then the, we'd have to put J back in, though. We have it at the council meeting that this moves forward through this body. Could the way you said it, I had no issues with the way she was speaking. Out of order. You're out of order, Alderman Sevenick. Um, Please refer. I'd, I'd like to do for the microphone, Alderman Nichols, and if you could stay with what the impact would be if Jay is removed, I'd I'd like to hear your dialogue. Thank you. I've already ruled. Uh, Alderman Grady. Well, I, I kind of agree with uh, Alderman Benner. I'm new to this, and the financial impact is a big decision here between eliminating J or bringing in B. Yeah. So am I confused as the fact that if we go back to the amendment that's on the board, that we substitute B, that J is completely gone, or we now can, we, now we can talk about costs and depreciation and stuff like that going forward, or, or is that going to be a mute point? You know, this is a recommendation to the council. We'll get to kick the can around the block. The mayor will run that meeting at that time, at the next meeting. So we're certainly uh, do this, do this all again. And my motion to to uh, out of order was uh, we've already. Her question was <laughs> to uh, talk about the safety issues again, and we've already discussed that. And we're going to move forward. And uh, let's take a vote. Alderman Collier. 
I'm more confused now than I was two weeks ago. Um, I didn't get no answer. I didn't get no answers tonight on the cost. If we decide to do nothing, what we'll have to kick in for what we've had done so far is the preliminary cost, the borings, whatever. I don't know what that is. You can't give me an exact number, and I can understand why. I I can understand that if I vote for B, it stays as is. We get some new light concrete, and it might be good for 40 years. And if I vote no, I'm saying that we're going to go back and look at everything and maybe end up with a new bridge, which would be best for Menasha in the long run, financially, the $100,000, and that's the number I hear to run it all the time, which could probably be 200000 when you're done. But you got to do what we're working on a waterway through Menasha, better downtown traffic. We want people to come downtown. So, in some ways, you got to improve some stuff, even at a cost of some people. And boy, I'm going to get run over on this one. But it's what's best for Menasha in the long run, and I hope everybody considers that. It's not because we're going to get yelled at or, or we got to go this way, that way, because we listen to too many different people. It's, it's what's not in your heart. It's what's best for the people long term. And, and if it's 100000 to maintain a bridge, you know, it's 100000 If it's 150, it's 150. But I'm more, I don't know, I don't know where to go on this. I wish there would have been a referendum, but we don't have a five-year plan. We don't have a 10-year plan in Menasha. And if we would have had that stuff, this would have said we're going to go for this and this and this time, and we would have all worked toward it. Now we got one council one year. Next council, we had three years now of arguing, but nobody can agree on us, and now we're all looking bad again. So I hope we make some good decisions tonight, and we're going to be in trouble tomorrow, so good luck again. There's nobody looking bad up here. This has uh, been a great discussion. Uh, times change, different things happen. Uh, for instance, uh, Alderman Nichols said we'd end up with a 100-year-old bridge in 40 years. Uh, Manasho already has a bridge that's uh, 112 years old, and uh, it's not our bridge, but it's a railroad bridge on, uh, on Water Street. And those cars are 100,000 pounds going over that bridge, empty. So there's something, and this bridge was built on these standards of, uh, of the railroad standards. It's rivets, it's good. Do you have something to say? Well, you're off topic. I'm not off topic. I'm repeating what Alderman Nichols said. I don't think it's alternate B. Yeah. Well, you should have interrupted Alderman Nichols at that time, that too, because I'm repeating what she said about a 100-year-old bridge. Okay. Uh, so we do have 100-year-old bridges. Oshkosh just had a 117-year-old bridge replaced down there in the same situation. So there's different standards that bridges are built at. And uh, certainly th this one be, would be renewed for 40 years and save the city probably $4 million. Uh, the mayor has told uh, the downtown business community that we can't afford $300 for Excuse me? Christmas well, decorations. Okay, well, this is what I've been told, that we don't have money for that. Where are we going to get $100,000 a year, folks? An extra hundred thousand dollars a year to have this new bridge and have us have that bridge. Any more discussion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Chairman. Since I'm not allowed to ask questions of the DOT, I'll make a statement that this project has uh, was initiated in 2015 with three stakeholder meetings, two public hearings, both with uh, input and engagement from the community, both the people uh, most impacted by the bridge and the community at large. Consideration was given to the needs and desires of the community, the neighbors most impacted, 
and combined with the concerns and uh, safety needs to create a design that was voted on and approved by the council in 2015. This was not done in a vacuum. The community had a voice and once again a common council is looking to uh, disavow that voice, take it away. If we as a community spent more time focusing on the future instead of rehashing the past, we'd be far more productive. Alder this uh, alternative J was forwarded from the Board of Public Works on a 7-1 vote to the Common Council. Alderman Taylor was the one objection. It passed at the Common Council four weeks later with one objection from Alderman Taylor. And now we have this conversation today. This does not reflect well on our community. And I'm sorry that we're not having a productive discussion about the issues at hand. I don't support the amendment. I don't support rehashing this conversation. We need to be thinking about Menashe's future. This has implications for redevelopment. It has implications for the economic success and vitality of our city. And we're talking about uh, $3.2 million over 40 years instead of the mm, 13 to 20 million that's coming into our community to give us a new bridge to connect us with those folks south of us an entrance to our city from the south and we're talking about taking it all back Building this bridge is about Menashe's future, and if we're concerned about funding $80,000 annually, then we should be talking about how to address that instead of throwing out the baby with the bathwater. The bridge is 65 years old. My parents are 65 years old. My dad gets to get a new knee this year. You get to get parts replaced. You're way off topic. The bridge doesn't have father. parts it's anymore. It's not about your father's health. The bridge doesn't have parts anymore. They can't get parts. It's not working well. We need to do something about it. Uh, don't disagree, Alderman Taylor. Alderman Sebenik. I, I don't disagree with you, but to say that this doesn't reflect well. It's just a matter of opinion. You know why? Because you don't agree with people that feel that there should be a rehabilitation over a brand new bridge that you have to take ownership of and hit the taxpayers of Menasha and then on top of it, give them a bill of $80,000 every year. It's a hundred. So, that, I felt, didn't reflect well. That's part of the reason why I ran. I was very disappointed that this council made that decision. As far as um, long-term, yeah, long-term. I'm looking out for the long-term of the community, the dollars that you're talking about. This is the less expensive route. This is the state's bridge. They're happy as heck that we're going to take ownership of this and have to maintain it. I don't agree with that at all. So it's really just a matter of opinion. 
don't think that we're not the future of Menasha, that if we build the brand new state-of-the-art bridge, that that's the future. I think that's a poor future to hand to the future generation because they're going to have to pay for it. I don't like that. So I am looking out for the dollars and the, the right decision here. Just because you made a decision in the past doesn't mean that that was the right decision. That was the wrong decision by, in my opinion. And that's just my opinion. But don't say that because of what the council did before was the right choice and that's the future. I think it was a poor choice that they made. And I think this has been a very um, progressive dialogue up here tonight. Uh, it's well over $100,000. Dr. Larson's building is $14,000 on the taxes. So now we're at 94,000. Then you got the RR Donley building on the other end. So it's well over $100,000. And you know, times 40, that's over $4 million for this community to uh, pay in taxes. Where, where are we gonna get the 100? That's what I would like to know by the next meeting uh, from the mayor. Where's the $100,000 a year coming from for the ownership of that bridge? I think that should be included with the, in, in the next packet so we know where, where are we coming up with that type of dollars? I don't know where we are, but you know, something's gotta suffer. You know, I think we need more police officers. Times are changing. Okay, gunfire in our city twice this week. It's getting serious stuff. Alderman Zelensky. Uh, thank you. Um, just reiterate, reiterating what Alderman Seven has said, this is, I think we are looking out for our future with alternate B because it comes down the road that this bridge could last, this, if we did decide on a new bridge, it could last 40 to 100 years, but we're gonna eventually be paying to replace that bridge. And I don't see the city affording that at that point in, or anytime soon. So I would rather have the state own this bridge. That's where I'm going at with alternate B. It would be nice to have a new bridge. It'd be nice to drive a Cadillac too. Thank you. <laughs> I think uh, the construction years ago was it was overbuilt. Everything was was uh, mechanically was overbuilt. Uh, structures were overbuilt. And today's standards, I think we're we're slipping in right about where 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 they may fail. And I don't think we built strong enough today. And that's why I would like to see this bridge. Uh, in 40 years, there'll be a council up here. I'll be gone and a few other people, uh, but uh, let them deal with it. And also, uh, time changes. We have three new people up here as aldermen, and and uh, people with new, when you have a new government, you move forward. You sign and die, and you move forward. And it's not just because some government three, two years ago said this is the way it is. Government today, and tomorrow and the next day will decide different things that have been decided in the past. And as Alderman Sevedek said, the state of Wisconsin's laughing at us because they got a bridge for us to own and we don't need to own a bridge. We don't need to own the, the dam downstream from the bridge and we don't need to own the locks. Cities our size do not have the shoulders to maintain projects like that and it's just it's, it's not good business alderman benner thank you mr chairman um i had one comment one question and now i have two comments and first one is you kind of hit on alderman nichols pretty hard for repeating herself and you're just doing a lot of that yourself and um the second thought that i had was oh um that other bridge that you're talking about that's 112 years old and how well built it is, it did collapse a few years ago. You mentioned that yourself. And the other thing is I wanted to look at Jennifer and ask her what that the tax impact would be on $100,000 a year to our average um, taxpayer. Kind of how it averages out per year. Yes, please. If, you would, if the chairman's okay with it. I'll hear from uh, our treasurer. 
looking at just the 2016 levy, um, just adding the 100,000 onto the current um, tax rate, um, we'd be looking at about um, adding about 10 cents onto the tax rate um, for both both counties. So I think it's adding 100,000 onto well, the levy. Yeah. That's not looking at any lev levy limits or anything like that, but just strictly adding the 100,000 on. So average. So if for a hundred thousand dollar home, yeah, uh, okay. that was what Alderman Grady had asked for. It would be about ten something about for ten dollars for a hundred thousand yeah. dollar home. Yes. Okay. Curious how many people you would ask if they would mm -hmm. think that that would be a big issue to them in the big picture. Um, if you ask me, I would say no. But I think I just wanted to uh, put that out there that we're talking a lot about what the impact is, and that is what the impact is. And you can make that decision in your own mind, whatever that means to you. And I know personally as a homeowner and taxpayer and alderman, I don't, <clears throat> doesn't sound like it's in the big scheme of things that it's detrimental to, to my tax bill, but um, certainly it may be to others. So thank you for that, for that input. I certainly feel $100,000 is a lot of money. If you break it down like that, then next year we should just be adding hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars if we use that financial scenario. And I'll be the first to throw up a hundred some thousand dollars for two new police officers in the next budget. I think that's what we need more than a bridge that the state will own. So I'm all for uh, advancing our city and let's not collapse our financial district that uh, the conversation up here says that we're not moving forward and progressive, but we, we collapse our downtown again. I don't think we're going to get our face out of the mud. And it's been a long road. We have the, some of the best entrepreneurs in this city that we've had in 40 years, since the 1970s. And I'm very proud of it. You drive down the street, and it's just, it's a beautiful downtown now. And we've come a long way since 1985. And thank goodness we had the proper people to make this all happen for us. And now for us to kick it to the side because of a project like this. No further discussion, we'll have a roll call. Thank you, oh, Mr. Collier. I'm out of the box here, but sometimes I think I might see some bullying up here and sometimes I just think I'm crazy. But uh, $10 to people, if you tell them why and what, they, they could have had referendums. They could have done a lot of things. But you want to progress in the world. You don't want to beat 1985, 1972. And believe me, all the owners have talked to me. All the people on Broad Street have put in their two cents. In the long run, the bridge would be the best thing to do. But if you want to stay conservative or cheap or whatever you want to call it, go with the plan you want. We're going to vote. I don't think it's going to come out good because I think the deck's stacked and that's, I'm getting in trouble, so I'll leave it alone. Thank you. Uh, back, uh, uh, Alderman Seven. I just want to add to uh, Alderman Benner's comment. That might be the case, but already our tax rate is the highest in the Fox Valley. I don't want to increase it anymore. I want to go the other direction. And if we keep doing these, adding 100 here and, and uh, 300, thousand here and it it puts us in a bad light you know obviously other communities say they don't want to be in Menasha because of those reasons you can't keep tacking on more and more I don't know why anybody up here or our citizens want to own a bridge why do we want to own the bridge let the state own it let them fix it and let us continue down the road here and something else that happened in 2015 I asked for a referendum from this body because I feel when you have a huge ticket item like this you should have should have had a referendum okay they chose not to do that at that time so uh, we didn't even have the public's voice on it uh, people wanted a bike bike path and that's all it was back then it was for the bike trail and uh, we don't need a bike trail there's no complaints on here you either get on walk it all those sidewalks are bigger than any bridge in Nina 
I'll call it for a vote. Motion carries on roll call, 4-3. Now we vote on the amended motion. The amended motion. Uh, Kurt, can you, uh, Clerk, can you read the amended motion? Um, the amended motion is to remove alternate J and recommend alternate B as the preferred option for the Racine Street Bridge replacement. And the city of Menasha has no interest in ownership of the Racine Street Bridge. Is there any discussion? That's a recommendation to the council. And this is a recommendation to the council, to the administration committee for the next meeting. Yes. Mayor Marcus. I'd just like to ask, what is the cost to kick this can down the road, as you said? We're a waterfront community. We're marketing ourselves as a waterfront community. This bridge is a very important part of that. We're encouraging people to come downtown to our waterfront to redevelop what our new community development director calls the South Shore, which I kind of like. Um, if they can't get there, how is that going to work? I live on the island. I go across that bridge there's probably four times a day in my car, probably 10 times a week on my bike, probably six times a week on foot. I've had complaints from a lot of people. I've had near misses on my bike where people moved over directly at me when a car started coming from the other direction and they were afraid to hit the car, but they forgot I was there. I've heard from people that live on Elm Street that they're afraid their kids are going to fall through the bottom of that railing. They don't want to walk across that bridge with their kids. I've heard from people on Riverway that they're afraid to bike that with their kids. So they go to the Nina Library instead of the Menasha Library because it's safe to get there on their bikes. There's a huge cost to kicking this down the road. Are we going to deny an entire generation? We're talking 40 years before this will be changed. The safety to go across that bridge, and even in a car, it's not that safe, but on a bike or on foot, it's not safe. Is, what is the cost? What cost do we put on a person's life? Is that $3.5 million? Is that the price of safety? If it was only $3 million, would we do it? Two million? What is that cost? And even if we do this, you're talking about the downtown businesses, we're gonna close it for a year anyhow. So if you're really worried about the downtown businesses being impacted, why don't we do it right? Rather than do it halfway and still risk downtown businesses, if that's what we're worried about. So that's not really something either. We're just looking at kicking this down the road, living in the past, not moving forward, jeopardizing the future of our community because we think that we can save a couple bucks. And if someone dies because we save a couple bucks, if someone loses a leg, someone gets seriously hurt, someone doesn't develop here, someone decides not to live here, is that really worth it? I don't think so. I think we should look forward, we should do what's right. We should figure out a way to fund it. We should continue talking with the state and the county and talk to them about how the fact is that we can't afford to. It's not right to take a regional acts, asset and throw it on the backs of the city of Menasha residents. This is used by everyone in the county, everyone in the state. That's why I've been working with the navigational authority, with the county, with the state to talk that and work with them to make sure that they recognize this as a regional asset. That's what that resolution was a couple of weeks back. And they hear that. Oshkosh is having the same discussion. Let's, let's start thinking about 
thinking regionally and let's start thinking about the future rather than just being cheap. And that's what we're doing here. We're trying to be cheap. And guess what cheap gets us? More cheap, more trouble, as someone just said over there. But it doesn't do a lot of good. Um, the chief ran me something. I think you misquoted the crashes. I just wanted to correct that. It's 5% of our crashes are on the corridor impacted by the bridge, not 25%, just so everyone knows that. But we talked about safety in 2016. We talked about safety of a private railroad crossing and how we needed a switchback because bikers were in peril there if we didn't have that. Well, bikers are in peril every day on that 10-foot lane. There's one, which one's more important? Just a couple weeks back, we talked about safety of cars, that they might hit a big power pole, and we needed to make sure that the cars were safe. But now we're not concerned about kids and bikes and pedestrians on this bridge. I think that's not where we should be going. We should be looking at safety on this bridge. We should be looking at economic development. And we should be figuring out how we can make this a regional asset. And I really do not support moving backwards. We need to move forwards in this community. Thank you, Mayor. A uh, couple uh, items that I just want to correct it. Uh, you said there's people telling you they're taking their kids to Nina. Well, please let them know the sidewalks on the Menasha Bridge are wider. There's a 12-inch curb in Menasha and a 6-inch curb in Nina. And Nina's Bridge has had fatalities, so please tell them to come to our library in Menasha. And I'm one for siding on safety. And we have 60, 65 years of data here. There's never been a fatality on their bridge and the accidents don't happen on their bridge. So let's look at, let's look at that, that data. And it's a pretty safe bridge with 65 years of data. All right, uh, we, clerk, uh, did we read the amendment already? Or the amended motion? The amended motion. To remove alternate J and recommend alternate B as the preferred option for the Racine Street Bridge replacement, and the city of Menasha has no interest in ownership of the Racine, Racine Street Bridge. Okay. We'll have a roll call. Oh, I guess there wasn't any discussion. Motion carried on roll call 4-3. Okay. Moving. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion passed 4-3 as a clerk stated. I'd like to thank... Uh, uh, our guests from the DOT here with your information today. Uh, thank you very much. I know it's been a long day for you. We'll move on to item two, street use application, community fest, parade of lights, Monday, July 3rd, 2017, 9 p.m. to 10.15 p.m., cities of Nina and Menasha. Any discussion? I'm sorry, I'll make a... Uh, uh, I'll look for a motion. Uh, Alderman Nichols. I'm sorry. Okay. Alderman Slinsky. I make the motion as stated for the street use application community fest parade of lights. Motion, motion made and seconded. Discussion on item two. Uh, I just had a, something for Director Tungate. Uh, with our other parades, uh, we do switch year to year what direction we're going. I've noticed in the last few years, we haven't had that directional switch. And I, I think that that directional switch is important to the city, especially people with younger kids over here, uh, saving them an, an hour at night. So uh, is there a reason we got away from that? Uh, I, I have not been at uh, a regular a regular attendee at that meeting. I, I just. I don't have that answer for you. Um, 
I can look into it and get back to you. Do we have a, a, a voice at the community <coughs> fest meetings? We have somebody at attends. Uh, we have <clears throat> various staff that, that do go. Occasion I go, the mayor goes, Vince goes once in a while. I think it's probably pretty important that uh, it's such a such a great event, and I certainly don't want them feeling that Manash is letting them do all the work. But uh, you don't know why we don't do the switch. I I, I haven't heard that come up in conversation. Okay, I've heard it from people with uh, smaller kids here in town, and we used to, I, I've been in the parade uh, quite a few times, and we do do that back and forth. So maybe if you could look into that, thank you. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Alderman Solinsky. Thank you. Um, have we ever um, budgeted dollars for parades for the aldermen that walk in it or people that walk in it from representing the city? Do they ever allocate dollars for them to hand stuff out? Because I went through this last parade and we didn't have any, it was just whatever we brought and it seemed kind of embarrassing once you got to Nina and you had nothing to hand out because <laughs> everything went out. So I'm just wondering if we ever thought of, I don't know, getting donations for us to hand stuff out or is there any dollars allocated to something like that or something Director, we can work on? Director Tuggate, I guess that was addressed to you. Uh, there's nothing in my budget to okay. do that. Maybe civic commemorations, maybe, I, I don't know. but. Well, ask the mayor up. when he comes back in, but we can move on. We can revisit that. Then. Yeah. Oh, I'll call it McRae. I was just going to say I don't think we want to oh, yeah. start that. Yeah, I know. Type yeah, of. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to ask Okay. Uh, uh, motion made and seconded. Uh, uh, we'll take a roll call. With that. Oh, Alderman McCallier's not here. <laughs> We should have that Jeopardy music playing when we're waiting for somebody. All, all my colleagues were just voting on the street use application for Community Fest, so we had a roll call so you can poke one of those. Motion carried on roll call 7-0. Okay, moving on to item three, street use application. Bizarre after dark, Thursday, July 20th, 2017, 12 noon to 12 midnight, Fox City's Chamber, uh, Pulse uh, Young Professionals. Uh, we have a motion. Alderman Solinsky. I'd like to uh, make the motion to approve the street ap application for the bazaar after dark. Stated at times by director. Is there a second? Motion made. Second. Awesome. Alderman Sevenick. Uh, motion made by Alderman Solinsky, second by Alderman Sevenick. Any discussion? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I was wondering uh, either Brian or the clerk, you want, can you let the uh, those few who are still watching, explain to them what this uh, event entails. Well, I, perhaps we can uh, answer that question by committee here. I know uh, uh, Dave, Dave was at the meeting, Debbie was there. I can take a, a stab at it. Uh, um, basically, they're talking about putting, um, they have some overhead lighting they want to put uh, in the downtown uh, area. It's basically, in my uh, estimation, it was uh, they're 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 bringing in some some retail vendors downtown, but they're also encouraging the downtown uh, businesses to stay open late. It's basically kind of a shopping festival kind of thing. Uh, there is music in Curtis Reed Square, but it's not really that's not the the intent of it. It's just sort of a, a side, um, I guess, um, attribute to the event. But it, it's mainly. Uh, it, it brings a lot of folks downtown. It's mainly for, for shopping. They want you to spend money down here. And also, it's uh, it's been held in Appleton and Kokona uh, very <coughs> successfully. Uh, Chief, I had a question about the street closure. I, I think I left you a voicemail on that. And um, is because of the length of time, is Shoot Street remaining open to the apartments and to the condos? 
and to faith technology yes i did return your phone call left you a message um my understanding is yes in front basically the one-way hill that goes down uh, that will be left accessible and w with the other events that have blocked off all of Main Street the event holder will actually be responsible for having someone at the top of the hill and the bottom of the hill to uh, in essence make that one way okay. a regulated uh, way to get in and out of there would you feel more comfortable if we had auxiliary uh, police take that uh, responsibility on it's worked with the other events having them do it and okay. uh, we're, we're pretty thin on a lot of things we have people already assigned to this event okay. as it is if they truly have four to five thousand people that is going to be a pretty good strain on what okay. I'm, I'm not assuming for uh, okay. I don't anticipate issues but just when you're talking about that many people and the parking okay. and the traffic control um, it'll be an interesting night okay and during the heat of this do we need anybody to direct traffic uh, across Main Street there's a stop sign I think is there a stop sign coming out of the parking ramp and that's what well but there'll be no cross traffic on main okay. street at that point so literally okay. once they get up the hill except for the pedestrians that's what i'm correct concerned with correct and that's what just i guess it's very similar to um well the, the car event is probably the most similar and uh it, it hasn't been an issue okay i know what the pist twisted piston they have Oh, I guess that was changed. Okay, I'll leave that go. Uh, so you're comfortable with that? And do they know that at the events meeting that they have to staff that that hill? That was explained to them okay, in, the, great. in the meeting. Yep. Okay, thanks for that. Any further discussion? Uh, Alderman Nichols. Thank you. I noticed on the application, the city attorney's initials are uh, not present. Is there something still needed for the application? I did call the attorney and I uh, asked her that question too. Well, I, I left your message <laughs> and I haven't okay. got it yet. I, I'm waiting for uh, the okay to respond. Um, the additional insured needs to be changed. What they provided was the additional insured if they were doing work, construction work for the city. And that's not what this is about. So they just need to substitute, and that's why I did not sign off on it. And did they are you, aware of this. They did, they're aware of this. Company. You contacted them. I did not. Okay. I don't do this. Um, Carol in um, on two <laughs> in public works is the one who gathers this information and provides okay. it to me. And she has the the legal uh, definition of what you're stating here. They don't. Have. Uh, she makes the contact with the uh, event holder and indicates to them what's needed correct okay. and then they bring it to me and I review it okay great event I hope we can uh, you're okay with us moving forward with this at this time I did not hear is right. there a question are you okay with us moving forward at this time without you signing off there well this will go on I assume to the um, Common Council, so, and yeah. by then they should yeah. have uh, so substitute okay the. With us moving it up tonight. It's okay. up to you. Thank you. <coughs> no further questions. Uh, we'll take a roll call. Well, she carried on roll call seven zero. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, item two: recommendation to award. DOT relocation distribution feeder under 441 project. Uh, and I have a motion. Alderman Zelensky. I move to recommend recommendation to award DOT relocation distribution feeder under 441 project. Motion made is there by Alderman Zelensky. Is there a second? I'll second as long as it's for $37,470. Okay. And seconded by Alderman Sivanek. Uh, is there any questions? Uh, we do have a representative that's been sitting here since six o'clock from the utility. And uh, uh, is there any questions for him? Uh, I think I had one question with that, and 
on the other side of 441, it, you could just come up to the mic there. And on the other side of 441, there's uh, an electrical station or something this is going to get boxed into. This, this it, There's currently a, um, a feeder under 441 from about where the old salt shed was. It comes out right there by Goss Auto Body in the corner of the cemetery. That line has to get moved 20 feet or so to accommodate uh, the wick drains for, uh, for the DOT project for the bridge right there. So we'll be relocating, boring in a new line over to that area uh, before we can de-energize the old line. Okay. And there's some future things you're planning for too with this? It, yeah, there, we're upsizing the, the feeder to uh, to full 600 amp circuit for future expansion down Valley Road. Okay. And there was something, was there something with fiber optics too or with the... There's the, currently, fi, em, there's an empty fiber optic line uh, or conduit going over there. We included that in here. We have no plans at this time for okay. that, but because we're a municipal status, the DOT pays 90% of the cost. So I think, what would we figure out what that was done? It was, uh, it was like. Yeah, the utility cost would be $700 to relocate oh, it. Great, great. Yeah. All right, uh, any further questions? Uh, take a roll call. Motion carried on roll call seven zero. Uh, item five, payment summers construction. I'll right, entertain a motion. Alderman Zalitsky. Thank you. Uh, the motion for payment for summers construction contract unit. 2017-01 new street construction including asphalt trail concrete sidewalk province terrace from province link to midway road for ninety seven thousand eight hundred and fifty two dollars and ninety three cents payment number two motion by alderman Zalitsky. Uh, is there a second second by alderman benner any further discussion uh roll call please well she cured on roll call seven zero uh, item six, authorization to execute intergovernmental agreement. Alderman Slonsky. Thank you. I make the motion to authorize executive intergovernmental agreement to satisfy eligibility for recycling consolidation grant for calendar year 2018. Uh, motion made by Alderman Slonsky. Is there a second? Second by Alderman Benner. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Motion carried on roll call 7-0. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Made, motion made by Alderman Sevenick, second by second. Alderman Zelensky. We are adjourned. Call all in favor? Uh, aye. <laughs> aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. <coughs>